answers. And the first question, what does it mean to write? Well, how do we even say it first? Four to the fifth power. That's good. Four to the fifth is good. Four raised to the fifth. That's a different way. So what does it mean to write that? How many times? Five fours. Okay. Four times four times four. I will continually come back to this really basic definition. If we keep this in mind, it will make all this other stuff pretty cut and dry. Uh, so just like I always try to go back to the meaning of solution, the meaning of function, the meaning of graph, the very basic things, uh, if we can keep those in mind, it clears everything up. Right? When you ask me, can I do this? We'll go back to this very, very basic definition, uh, and it, it should make pretty good sense. All right. So let's see, we have um, x squared times x to the third. Now, what is that? Um, I think I remember from last that what if you have like that and you have the two square roots, you just move whatever sign is up and then you just make the square roots. So mm -hmm. like x to the sixth. Oh, okay. So it's possibly x to the two times three. I thought it was if you multiply, you add them. Okay. If you multiply, you add the exponents, or maybe if you multiply, you multiply the exponents. Any other theories? Okay, good. So we whittle it down to two, I think I remember. Right? Anybody have something uh, more than I think I remember? Yeah? Um, if you write it out like that, like that, then there's five x's that you multiply, so it's x to the fifth. x squared is x times x. Okay, so that's that part. All right, we can put it right there, x times x. And x cubed is x times x times x. Okay, so right now we just have two numbers, x times x and x times x times x. And we're taking these two numbers, what are we doing with these two numbers? Oh. We're multiplying them together. So it turns out we just have this long string of multiplying x's together. Okay? And that's x times x times x times x times x, x to the fifth. Then we do that a bunch of times and we recognize, hey, if I just multiply uh, something that has a base of x and also a base of x, Hopefully we get like this flash in our minds of x times x times three more x's. That's five x's being multiplied together. The shorthand for that is x to the five up in the superscript, x to the fifth. Okay? So then what would n to the fourth times n to the fifth be? N to the ninth. N to the ninth. Okay? And it's not just because we remember it from some time that you're supposed to do this thing. It's we would like to go the other way. Know what it means to say m to the fourth times m to the fifth, and then make the shortcut for ourselves that if we're multiplying together, well, we just have this many m's times this many m's. So we're multiplying those m's all together, right? And that'd be a string of nine m's we're multiplying together. And to, to shorthand that, to, to write that more quickly, nine m's multiplied together. Right, and to the ninth. Okay, there's no magic, there's no mystery there. All right. So the things that we need to remember, first of all, the, the important thing is they're the same thing, right? We can only do that with x's and x's. If we had x to the third times y to the fourth, that's all it is, right? We, we, we can't write this as x to the seventh or y to the seventh or x, y to the seventh. We have three x's and four y's, and there's not really any ways to, to write this using a single exponent. We have three x's multiplied together, multiplied by four y's multiplied together. There's no putting those together in a, a nice way. Okay. Write that up. Okay. That's what we call having the same base. You got your base, and you got your exponent. Base and exponent. Same bases can go together. Nope. Different bases, probably not. So r to the sixth over r to the fourth. What should r to the sixth over r to the fourth be? 
Is art of the second? Art of the second. Correct. How come? Because it's the opposite of multiplying. You're, you do the opposite um, thing. Yeah, thing. Rule. Rule. Sure. Uh, seems reasonable. When you multiply those things together, you're adding their exponents. So when you divide the same base, why not subtract? Not a bad piece of, of reasoning. Yep. If you wrote all the R's out, and then you just cancel them with the bottom, there's two left. Right. We got R times R times R times R. We got six R's here, four R's here. Let's move this over. That is correct. What we really have is like every R can partner up with another R. So we really have r over r times r over r times r over r times r over r. Okay. Well, those four r's multiply together to make those four r's. We multiply, you know, straight across with our our uh, fractions. Multiply these straight across, we get those four r's. But in the numerator, we still have another r, and another r. But in the denominator, we run out of. So I would really, really be in your favor to actually understand cancellation within fractions. Okay. Still seeing some troubles being had and when we're trying to cancel things out in a fraction. Okay. The things that we can cancel out are factors. And these are factors. How do we know they're factors? What's the definition of a factor? They're, I think maybe we're mixing up factor and multiple, mm -hmm. which happens a lot. Um, this is a factor of our 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 factor. Why are we calling them factors? Something really simple but really important that makes it a factor. Because they can be multiplied by one to, well, multiplied by a number to add that number. Yeah, you can take r and multiply it by something to get r to the sixth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So factors are things we multiply together. We don't add them, we don't divide them, we don't do anything but multiply factors together. If something's a factor, then hidden within that, that word factor is we are multiplying this by something else. Okay? Three is a factor of 15. Why? Because three multiplied by five is 15. So three is a factor. And r certainly is a factor of r squared, or r to the sixth, because r times five other r's gives us r to the sixth. Okay? So we can only cross out cancel common factors because this is what's really happening. We can separate these two things we want to cancel out into their own fraction. So r divided by r is one times one times one times one times, oh, we're just left with r squared over one times one, which is one. Um, so that 6 minus 4 is just a shortcut that, that saves us from doing all that every time. Right? Uh, so if we were to apply that, uh, that shortcut, what would q to the 8th over q to the 3rd be? Q to the 5th. Q to the 5th. Q to the, we can take 8 minus 3. Why? Because 3 of these are going to cancel 3 of these, right? So these 3 are really in the denominator of the fraction. And these eight are in the numerator of the factor, fraction, and three of these factors of Q are going to cancel three of these factors of Q. And we're left in the numerator with five factors of Q. Q to the five over one. Okay. Y squared raised to the third power. What's that going to be? Y to the sixth. Y to the sixth. Yes is going to be y to the sixth. Now can we, using this definition of, of exponentiation, can we justify that we would just multiply the two times the three? How so? Um, like there's a group of two and mm -hmm. you just have three groups of two. Exactly, we have three groups of two, three groups of two y's. Right? To cube something means to multiply it by itself three times. What are we multiplying by itself three times? Two y's, right? We've got y times y times y times y times y times y. Okay. 
this is y squared. And when we take y squared and multiply it by itself three times, we get three groups of two y's. Should be six factors of y, which we shorthand write y to the sixth power. So we actually have seven groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we're multiplying something by itself seven times. Right? And each of those groups is what? Each of those groups is four factors of t, t to the fourth, t times itself four times, however you want to think about it. So we have seven groups of four t's as t to the what? 28. <coughs> so it would be great is it, it, maybe you later are going to forget. You forget that when you multiply uh, two things together that have the same base, you're thinking, is it multiply or is it add? Okay? You should slow down for a second and, and be sure of, of which one it is if you're going to use the shortcut. Make sure you're shortcutting something you understand. Um, so is it add or multiply? So just mul write it out and you say, oh, there's two here, there's three there. I'm just multiplying them together. There's five. It's, it's add. Okay. Really common thing to get mixed up is adding when you multiply and multiplying when you raise a power through a power. And if we do, if we just write it out, if we actually understand what exponentiation, you know, you know exponent notation means, if we write it out, the mystery is revealed. We're reminded that when you multiply, you add. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. Okay. So those are our basic properties. <coughs> Let's see here. We've got, uh, this is called power of a product. This is called power. Uh, is this is the power of a product. Who do you think this is the power of what? Quotient. A quotient. A product is what you get when you multiply, and a quotient is the thing that you get when you divide. This is power of a tree. We're taking this thing that's raised to a power, and what we're we doing with it? Is already raised to a power, and then we take it and do what with it? Power. Power. To a power. Power of uh, power. We're taking something with a power, and we're finding the product of it with something else. We're taking something with a power, we're finding the quotient of it with something else. We're taking something that's raised to a power and raising it to a power, so the power of power. Gives us more power. <coughs> more power to you. Starts us off. It's our jumping off point, basic properties. So now we're going to use those properties to help us understand things like something to the zero or a negative power, if I remember correctly. So we're going to use those properties, power of a property, or sorry, power of a product, power of a quotient, so on, to understand things like, what do you get when you raise it to a zero power? What do you get when you raise something to a negative power? Um, so first, the zero power. If we take a number, this could be any number except for zero. So A could be any number except for zero. We raise it to zero. Does anybody remember what a to the zero is? One. One. Can you prove it? Can you convince us that for some reason something raised to a zero power, anything raised to a zero power, is a one? That's just what I remember. Okay. Remembering is good. Remembering correctly is good. Yeah? Um, does it a times not a times times a times a? Okay, then why is it a to the zero a? Why is it a to the zero than just a? If it's just, you said it's just a, then why why does it equal a? I don't mean to make anybody look foolish here. Or anything. I just, you know, I'm playing devil's advocate here. What? How do how do we justify this? 
We're at the level where we can justify it rather than just memorize it. Jessica, did you have a? No? OK. No? OK. So that would like you to be able to, to I mean, this is just one explanation. It's the explanation that I like. I think it's the simplest one. And uh, maybe you can take it. And if somebody asks you now, you'll know. And you can, you can like, justify it to them. All right. <coughs> so let's take, uh, we'll just start with a to the fifth. Okay, well that's just five factors of a. Okay, so let's divide a to the fifth by a. A to the fourth, right? A to the five minus one. Now we don't do five minus one without realizing exactly what's happening. We're fa canceling out a factor of a, right? But the, the exponent will be the fourth exponent, the fourth power. Let's take that same a to the fifth and we'll divide it by a squared. This what? A to the third. A to the third. We're factoring. Uh, we're canceling out uh, two factors of a with two of these factors of a. We're left with. Third. A to the fifth over a to the fourth. Just jump right up through the third, go to the fourth, that'd be what? A to the a. first. Yes. Right? A. A to the first is just a, one factor of a. Okay, so then we go all the way to a to the fifth over a to the fifth. Well, what would be the exponent? Zero. Zero. We got 5 minus 1, that's 4. 5 minus 2, that's 3. 5 minus 4, that's an exponent of 1. 5 minus 5 should give us an exponent of 0. Okay. But what is a to the fifth divided by a to the fifth? What's a number divided by itself? 1. It's 1. Okay. So, simply and truthfully put, a to the 0, anything, because a is just any number, right? It could be anything, but it can't be 0. You can see it can't be zero because if we we can't divide by zero, so it can't be zero. Um, so a to the zero, a number to the zero equals one because it has to. That's pretty much what it works out to. Okay, a squared is where it all started. Right? Some mathematician got tired of writing five times five or three times three and said, "Well, I'll just write a little two up here. It'll stand for how many factors that I have." Uh, so it started there. We had a to the third, and a to the fourth, and a to the fifth, and a to the sixth. And it was inevitable that at some point somebody would put exponents and zeros together and say, what would it be if I raise it to the zero power? Right? That's probably a really good question back then. We didn't really know. And then we figured out, well, if this is what exponents do, and these are the properties of exponents, when you multiply things together that have the same base, we add the exponents, raise a power to a power, and multiply the powers, uh, what would it have to be? What would raising to the zero have to turn out to be? And through this fairly simple explanation, a to zero, it has to come out to be one. If it didn't, all the other stuff would break. Right? The rest of math would break if something to the zero wasn't one. Okay. <coughs> so if you change one little thing, like make A to the zero not one, then everything else falls apart. Yeah. We get if we allow something broken to not be broken, say it's not broken, then everything breaks down. Like we can't divide by zero, right? We all know that. I hope we all know that. Divide by zero. We say we can't, and we just say there isn't a definition for dividing by zero. There's no result. You put it in, nothing happens. Okay? There just is no result for dividing by zero. If you could divide by zero, you could prove things like one equals two. If you can prove one equals two, one could equal anything. And now we have all sorts of problems. Wait, how does something divided by zero make one equal? Um, I'll show you some other time. But you can do a simple little proof, and then if you are allowed to divide by zero, that doesn't just break and be undefined, then we can prove one equals two. I'll have to show you another time why that is. So a to the zero would have to be what? That's the way it is. So something to the zero is one. And if from this day forward you just remember that something that's a zero is one, great. You can function in math and be fine. All right. So let's now use this same line of thought uh, to start talking about some negative exponents. 
What would it be? What would it mean if A was raised not to two or three or four or five, not zero, but negative one or negative two? Can we put negative numbers up there? Maybe we can't. Like we can't divide by zero. Maybe we can't put negative numbers up there. But maybe we could. So we start with a to the fifth divided by a divided by a squared, a to the fourth, a to the fifth. So let's keep going. a to the fifth over a to the sixth. Well, first let's just write it out. Let's just write it out. So that's a times a times a times a times a over a times a times a times a times a. That's it. Times. All right. Well, I'm going to take the time to write this out. But as we're talking about, it's going to take a second. But it, oh no, it could it could actually take less time. Let's take this. That. Okay, so up to this point we have five factors of A, and down here we have five factors of A. If we do it one more time, well, I can't just copy that, right, because I only have five factors of A in the numerator. In the denominator I have that extra factor of A, so I'm just left with a one over A over here. Well, what's A over A? One. One. Times one, times one, times one, times one times 1 over a, times 1 over a. So one way of looking at it, a to the fifth over a to the sixth has to be 1 over a. Well, if we go all the way back to a to the fifth over a to the sixth, and we use like our, our rule, our little shortcut, then what will the exponent be? What exponent will we get if we use our subtraction rule for a quotient? Negative 1. Negative 1. So it's always the numerator, the numerator power minus the denominator power, that'd be a to the negative one. So a to the negative one is one over a to the positive one. What do the negative exponents mean? They seem to have some kind of a connection with the denominator of the fraction. Let's go uh, to the seventh power. A to the fifth, over a to the seventh. Well, we're not going to write it out like this again. We can imagine, though. We got five factors of a in the numerator, seven factors of a in the denominator. Okay. So when we do all this and cancel, we're going to wind up with one over a squared. You got two factors of a left over in the denominator. If we were to use the subtraction, what would the subtraction give us as the exponent? 2, 5 minus 7, negative 2. So if I give you some number a to the negative something power, how do you interpret that? 1 over a positive number? number? 1 over, yeah, 1 over a to positive power, whatever that power is. Here's a real, here's a real doozy. All right. You guys ready? Do you eat turkey for lunch? This big old turkey sandwich. Tryptophan. You know what tryptophan is? Tryptophan. It's it's so it's 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 Although, that's really kind of a joke because there's so little tryptophan in turkey that it's. That's why milk helps. It has tryptophan in it. Does it? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that. Do you, I think we. The corner of my eye, it looks like you're raising your hand. Oh, no, I'm just going to So, yeah, don't hold your pen. You can hold your pen now. I'm going to hold your pen. Okay, what about if we have, like, A to the, we'll, we'll use M so we don't get confused. Like, what if the negative exponent's in the denominator to start with? How do we interpret that? What's that? Well, Let's just deal with a to the negative m, because we just talked about that. So a to the negative m right, in the denominator is, like what? how would I represent this number, a to the negative m, using this as our guide? A, a m over, wait, yeah, a m over a. Oh, I think I'm 
messing you up here. These are two different things. If we have a number to an, a negative exponent, we just write it one over that number to the positive exponent. Okay. So what we have here is a number to the negative exponent. It's just in the denominator. So in the denominator, we have a to the negative m is equal to what? One over a to the m. So now we're we're dividing this by a fraction. Dividing by a fraction is easier, easier, more easily done. By doing what? How do, you multiply, how do you divide by a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to take 1, 1 over 1 if you like. I think that's what this 1 is. Multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over a to the m. That's a to the m over 1. That's just a to the m times 1 over 1 is just a to the m. So a to the negative power is 1 over a to the positive power. 1 over a to the negative power is <coughs> and I'll just try and help you out as we try to simplify these expressions and stuff. If I said like a like x squared times y to the third over um, a to the negative 2 times b to the fourth. Okay. Well, th all these bases are different, and so we're not really worried about trying to combine them and get a, a, a single exponent. But this guy with a negative exponent, we don't like negative exponents for the most part. We'll try and get them to rewrite them to be positive exponents. Okay. Well, Really quickly, all right, so this is 1 over a squared, right? That's what a to the negative 2 means. b to the fourth, we could write that if, if we like. It's a little helpful to write it as b to the fourth over a squared. Right? And we multiply by the reciprocal, so we get x squared times y to the third over, or not, yeah, over 1, I guess, times a squared over b to the fourth. So now we get x squared y to the third a squared over b to the fourth. So what do you think would be like a shortcut if you started from here and want to just jump right to here? One ball and negative exponents. Yeah. Okay. And that's it's important that we recognize that they have to be a factors. Right? If it was like a to the negative two plus b to the fourth, that's completely but it's a to the negative 2 times b to the 4. So if we got negative exponents down here, we can move them up there. If we got negative exponents up here, very similar argument could be made to moving them down there. Okay. So we got negative exponents. They just want to be where they're not. See if we can use these properties to simplify some expressions uh, like number 30. Number 30 in 5.1. Just going to write this down for you and let you work on it for a minute. Lots of different ways to use these properties to approach simplifying this. But in the end, what we want is to not have negative exponents. And if we can somehow combine things at the same base, like x squared times x to the third is x to the fifth, we want to do that. All right. Like I said, there's lots of different ways to approach this. So. Um, Start somewhere, what could we do if we start doing it? Just move the negative x power, yeah, the x negative one power and the y negative one power. Okay. So the negative one power is going to come down here, so we'll have x times x squared. At the same time, we'll move the y to the negative one into the numerator, so it's a y to the positive one. So you have y squared times y to the positive one. 
Go any further and simplify this. Y to the third over root of x squared. Got two y's, right? There's two terms that have a base of y. So we have y times y times y, that's y to the third. x times x times x is x to the third. Also write this as y over x raised to the third. We have y over x to the third. What does it mean to raise something to the third? Times it three times. Times it three times. What are we what are we times in three times? y over x. y over x times y over x times y over x. Well, that's definitely a way to write y over x raised to the third. Or if we just multiply straight across, what do we get in the numerator? y times y times y, times y. x times x times x. So you have this other property, if you like. a over b to the n is a to the n over b to the n. Intriguing. Yeah. And another property, if you multiply a times b, a times b to the n, a to the n times b to the n. Because we'll just take that many factors of A and B, we'll multiply them together n times. We can arrange the A's together, there'll be n of those, and the B's together, there'll be n of those, and we have A to the n times B to the n. So, a couple more properties. <coughs> Fun. Yeah. What's next? side of the parentheses if possible. Let me move this over and I'll let it branch off into a bunch of different possibilities. So what's what's one thing we can do first? One first move okay. we, we can put one more word get rid of the negative power okay. of three and put. So we got a negative three power, right? And and the, the property of negative exponents applies to anything that's raised to a negative exponent, even if it's a big old parentheses full of stuff. So you can do one over three a to the third, b to the fifth, to the negative third, or sorry, to the positive third, it's now in the denominator. There it is, down there, no negative exponents, that's nice. And we just, really for the, the sake of practicing applying these properties, we'll take it, it's in parentheses right now, we'll get it so that it's not in parentheses, right? I was just thinking, should you distribute the three? Okay, so a word about that word, distribute. A distribute word can be confusing, so I'll, try to avoid using it as much as possible because the distributive property and this distributing of this exponent are, are different things. But I'm gonna show you what's going on here. We have three factors of this, three a cubed b to the fifth times two more factors of this. There's one, and there's another 
another one. And now we're just multiplying everything together. So there's no really need to have these parentheses. We got three b times a cubed times b to the fifth. And we can multiply it in any order that we want to. So we can do the threes together. That's three to the third. And we can do a to the third to the third. And then b to the fifth times itself three times. b to the fifth to the third. Okay. So there's our, quote, distribution. Was three to the third? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. How do we raise a to the third to the third? Multiply by three x. Right. We got three sets of three a's. That's three times three. Right. And similar argument. B to the fifteen. Five times three. Like that, rather than doing that first, right? By uh, taking the negative and negative exponent, putting it in the denominator, we start differently. Anything else be the first thing that we do? Multiply the negative three. So, like, do kind of like this step from here to there, but with the negative. Everything gets a, an exponent of a negative three. So three to the negative three times a to the negative three times, or b to the three to the negative three, a to the three to the negative three, times b to the five to the negative three, Right here, you just put them in the denominator now? Yeah. Okay. 3e to the third. And then a to the, did you do the ninth right here? Yeah. So you did 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and then just mm -hmm. move it down here, maybe kind of in one step in your head. b to the negative 15, the last b to the positive 15 in the denominator. Here we have 3 to the positive 3, and we have 27. Previous, there's there's lots of different ways to go. We'll definitely, if we do it all correct, we'll wind up with the same thing, everybody. Uh, but we have to start somewhere. What's one way we can start? Really? Split it apart. Split it apart. The R's and the S's. R's and the S's. How do you mean? Um, four R to the fourth over twenty-four R to the fourth, and then S over five, or s to the fifth over s to the negative six. Okay, good. Absolutely, because we're just multiplying these things together, and if we make them each their own fraction, it's the same, it's equivalent. We're just multiplying these all together. Okay, so what does that get us? Um, and then you simplify them. Simplify them? Okay, do you start with this one? Yeah. How'd you um, simplify this? The r to the fourth and the r to the fourth turn out to be one. R to the fourth divided by r to the fourth, they just, every factor of r cancels out every other factor of r. Okay? Divide them both by four. 
These are both divisible by four, so you get one over six. Okay. Bring the negative five to the top. Okay, so you have s to the fifth times s to the fifth mm -hmm. over one. So I'm going to write it over one. And then we multiply these together and you get what? s to the tenth. s to the tenth over six. That's good. Anybody else do it differently? Yeah, Anthony? Um, I just put s minus five. Oh, you moved it up? Yeah. Right away. Okay, let me erase what I just did there. So 4r to the 4th, s to the 5th, times another s to the 5th, now that it's in the numerator, over 24r to the 4th. Then I just took uh, the r and the, the two r to the 4th, and just put them, made, made it one. So you just like, they cancel yeah. each other out? r to the 4th, divide by r to the 4th? Then I added the two. Okay, so we got s to the tenth, and now here we have twenty-four. And then I just uh, divide both by four. Divide this by four, divide this by four, you get s to the ten over six. How about this? Could we do um, like do four over twenty-four times r to the fourth over r to the fourth times s to the fifth over s to the negative fifth? Kind of similar to, to what Emily did to start with. And here we just simplify each one where like they're relatable. Four divided by 24 would be one sixth. And then we could do um, the property of uh, where we get the power of a quotient, where we take r to the fourth minus four. Right? Subtract the exponents. Can we do that? Why not? Uh, times s to the fifth minus negative five. Sixth. Oh, it's r to the zero. One. So one six times one times what's five minus negative five? It's ten. So we get s to the tenth one. S to the tenth over six. Another way to go. That's why oftentimes when you ask me, am I supposed to do this? Should I do this? I will give you a really vague answer because there's not anything that you should have done. There's things you, sh you shouldn't do that you can't do, and there's not only one thing that you should do over any other thing. Okay. So here I'm gonna kind of jump us ahead down to the next section, the section after that, okay, because it's really closely related, in my mind at least. And I'm just gonna have you see, you know, you just do what I ask you to do. I think it's pretty intuitive, and if not, is 5.3 and all I want you to do is what it looks like you're supposed to do. something we should uh, address first, and we can add and subtract things like this, is only when they're like terms. What does it mean for something to be like terms of something else? Okay, got to have the same letter, or what we call the base. Got to have the same base, good. Same variable. x squared, that would be 8x squared. 8x squared. And we can justify that for very similar reasons as to uh, the ones that we started off the day with. Way, way back here. Millennium ago. Yeah, a millennium ago. 
when we combine these two things uh, with the same base, we can put them together with a single exponent because we're just multiplying uh, five of those together. We can do a similar thing with like terms. Okay, here's three x squared. Well, what does it mean to say three times x squared? Three times x times x. Yes, three times x times x. Or take the term x squared and add it to x squared and add it to another x squared. Right? Just like exponents mean multiple factors, this means multiple summons. Summons is the word. And here's five of them. Five, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do one. Five more. Okay. Putting this coefficient in here is just it's multiplication. It's shorthand for I've added this thing together a bunch of times. I'm adding this thing together eight times now, so I have eight of these things, eight groups of x squared. Okay. Now three x squared plus five x does not combine to eight x squared or eight x cubed or eight x. If we think about it, we just have x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x plus x. That's not an x. x plus x plus x plus x. So, you know, if I just take it down to these two, I can't add an x squared to an x. They're not in the same row. x squared is x times x. x to the first is just x. If I add them together, I don't have two groups of anything that's the same. You could, but then you'd have x times x plus x times x plus x times x plus x plus x. They're not x times x plus x. They're not in the same field. Does that make sense? I can't do x, plus, x times x plus x. Can't combine them. They're not like terms. Now we come up here. Now I'd like to put this x squared with his other x squared term, but I can't quite do that yet. Why? There's this minus thing. There's this minus thing in front of this parentheses. This minus sign says subtract this parentheses. So I'm going to subtract the stuff that's in the parentheses. I need to subtract this thing, and I also need to subtract this. I also need to subtract this thing, or what we call distributing, distributing that negative. So now we've distributed the negative. Everything is like on, on equal ground. We can just combine like terms together. So we've got a certain number of x squared. How many x squared do we have all together? Five. Five of those. Okay, followed by negative 11x minus 4, minus four 5 minus 9, negative 4. Okay. Just combining like terms. Put x squared terms with x squared terms, x cubed terms with x cubed terms, so on and so on. It's almost as simple as just putting like terms together. We just can't quite do it yet. There's, just, there's one thing we have to do before, which is distribute the negative. Distribute the negative. 2a squared minus 8 minus a cubed minus 4a squared plus 12a minus 4. In the order that you do things now is it's just completely up to you. There is like a standard, but it's not a right way. The standard would be
to write it so that you have this a to the highest power, then a to the next highest power, and write it as in order of descending powers. So it's the highest power that we observe here. A to the third. A to the third. So how many do we have? Negative three. Negative one of those, okay. And so next would be a to the second. What's the coefficient of a to the second? Negative two. Negative two, that's the coefficient of a to the second. Next is a, what do we have there? That part? 12 a. 12 a, we have our constant. Minus 12, that should have been a. Plus 12 a minus four. Well that's fun. I know it. It's the funnest thing since sliced bread. Don't question it. Can I slice you real quick? What did he say? Have you ever used bread slicing machine? It's pretty fun. It's got like 25 bread knives just like sitting there and just go back and forth. Imagine if you got your hands on you. I don't like to imagine that. <laughs> you just like get Paul through and like separate all your fingers and like your arm. Okay. Um, all right. So there we go. We've done something called uh, subtracting polynomials. We're geniuses. There's a subtraction part. Not a big deal. Polynomials. Can anybody break that word down? Polynomials. Poly means many, nomial means number, many numbers. There you go. Polynomial is, there's one. Here's a polynomial. And here's another one. And uh, here's a big one. And here's that same one, all cleaned up and like terms combined. A polynomial. We could, we could write a, a general thing, but it would, it would look so messy. But a polynomial um, is one that has coefficients, right, like negative 2 or negative 1 or 12, uh, coupled with um, Variables raised to exponents. Variables raised to exponents. Not uh, numbers raised to variables. That would not be a polynomial. So the best way to see a polynomial is just to see polynomial over and over and over and get an idea for what it looks like. Next that we put together, these are polynomials. We put them together, made them a single polynomial. Here is a couple of polynomials. We <coughs> subtracted this one from that one, and we got this polynomial. Okay. Well, we subtracted polynomials. That's where we like our first step is to distribute the negative, and then we could add polynomials. That would just be where we didn't have. So here, if we have untrained ourselves to, from thinking FOIL is the way you multiply those sets of parentheses together, then here's, here's the payoff, okay? Um, like I said, I've seen it be a confusion, and maybe now it won't be if we let go, let, let go of that, okay? Because what we're going to do now is multiply polynomials together, which is just the distributive law, just distributing one set of parentheses into another. Why on steroids? <laughs> no. Not that. But I appreciate your effort. Is this wrong? Yeah, I this wrong. Um, 2a minus 3, there's a polynomial. Okay? It's what we call a first degree polynomial, a one degree polynomial. And I'll write another one, and I'll, I'll see if you can figure out why we call that one a first degree. And here's another polynomial. We're about to put them together into one polynomial. But this polynomial is a second degree, a degree two polynomial. The second one in the order. Huh? The second one in the order. In the order of this one's first and this one's second? Not a bad guess, but wrong. Go yeah, just send powers. Yeah, they got the a to the second power, got a to the first power. Okay, if we had just, for instance, a to the third plus five, we don't even have to even have to have all the other powers uh, present. 
This would be a what? Third. Third degree, degree three. Okay, about biggest power right there is four to the fourth degree polynomial. Okay. We'd like to go ahead and, and just by tradition take this and write it in descending order, so like this, and then the squares come next, and the 5a, and then the constant if there were a 1. So that covers what a polynomial is, what it looks like, what degrees mean. Like I said fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree. I'm just talking about what the highest power is. So we've been practicing uh, not foiling, but just distributing every term from one parentheses into every term in the other parentheses. That rule will carry through forever and never stop working. Um, you can imagine that, say we were to have a squared minus 10a minus 2, and we were to have a uh, 5 there. What would we do with a 5? Distribute. Distribute it. Multiply by that, by that, by that. That would go for any number that was out here, 5, 10, 15, negative 12, doesn't matter, any number. Even this number, which is actually like a big set of parentheses which represents a number. That number would be distributed. So, that, so you can see that this set of parentheses gets multiplied by this, and also by that, and also by that. And then if we were to write that out, 2a minus 3 gets distributed to a squared, uh, plus 2a minus 3 gets distributed to negative 10a, plus 2a minus 3 gets distributed to negative 2. You can see how every term in here gets multiplied by every term in here. This gets multiplied by both of these, this by both of those, this by both of those. You can see that by every pairing. So from that, we can just kind of induce that all we need to do is make sure that we, we couple up every possible pair of numbers, one from the first set and one from the second set, do every possible pair, multiply those all together, and then combine like terms. Multiply everything by everything. Multiply everything by everything. You must multiply all the things. Multiply, yes. X all the Y. slow. Maybe you need it to be slow. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're ready to move on. I'm just going to make sure we multiply 2a by everything in here. So 2a times a squared. That's the first one. So that's 2a to the quarter and third power. Okay, so we multiply 2a by a squared, and now we're going to couple 2a with negative 10a. So that gives us negative 20a squared. A times a is a squared. And 2a times negative 2 negative 4a. So now the first term has been distributed to everything else in the second set of parentheses. Now that that's been distributed, we move on to negative 3. Distribute that. Minus 3a squared plus 30a plus Now 2a has been distributed, and negative 3 has been distributed. Everything has been distributed to everything else. Every possible combination has been made. So it's fully done. Everything's distributed out, and now we just combine like terms if we can. Got uh, 2a cubed. There's no other cubes, okay? So it's nice, especially when these get like maybe three terms times another three terms, it gets to be really long. I like to cross them out as I go to make sure I've got them. Got all the a cubes. Okay, so there's an a squared and an a squared, and that's it. There's only two a squared terms. If you put them together, we have negative 23 a squared. Those are done. We've got these a terms. 30a minus 4a 
is 26a. Those have been used. Plus 6. The only constant there is. Or 6. 6. 6 is the one that's on there. I guess right now it is. But 6 is really the joining of negative 3 and negative 2. So it's a, it is a friendship. Um, that's 21, and now I will have you do number 22. I'll write it down for you if you don't have it. Just make sure you pair everything with everything else. Combine like terms. It won't be right. It won't be right. Saw me drawing those arches. I thought it was really, really helpful. Um, and just to show you that it, you know multiplication is always commutative, which means it doesn't matter which order we do this in. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this first and that second, which will also show you what should you do if you got three terms here. Just need to make sure to distribute them all to everything else. So we take this term here and distribute it to the 5c squared. When I draw that arch, I'm going to multiply those two together, and I will never multiply those two together again. It will be done. So 2c squared times 5c squared gives us 10c fourth. And 4, 2c squared times negative 4, 8c squared. That's all done. C, C. 5c squared is 5c to the third. c to the negative four is negative four c. Now c has been distributed to everything in here. If there were a third thing, we'd move on to the third thing. But there's not just those two. So then negative three. Negative 2c squared. Negative three times negative four. By drawing those, I've made sure that everything got paired up, and I made sure I didn't miss anything, and I didn't do anything twice. And this. All right, so we look for c to the fourth. There's only one of them, so we don't need to combine with everything. Uh, here's the c to the third. Skip that one, go to the c to the third. There's no other ones. Here we got our c squared term. Here's another c squared term. Negative 15 minus 8 is negative 23 c squared. And our c term, there's only one of those, minus 4c. And there's only one constant, 12. Let me make sure to multiply everything by everything else and to combine all the like terms. Not miss any, not get any uh, too much. Many put together. That seems good. Seems doable. Multiply those polynomials together. All right. So one last thing. I'm going to ask you to multiply three times five times seven. And I want you to ask yourself, how do you multiply those three numbers together? What's the actual process? But you can't actually multiply three numbers together. You have to multiply two numbers together. It's called a binary operator. It's five for two. Binary, you multiply two numbers together, and then you get this new number, and you multiply that number by a second number. You can only multiply two numbers together. So uh, 15 times 7, um, and that's 85. No, it's not 85. It's 105. Well, it's the same with polynomials. We have three polynomials. We've got to multiply two polynomials together and then bring in the third polynomial. And we have a fourth one, bring in the fourth one after that. Okay, grab the podium here. Let's go finish this off today. X plus four times X minus six. 
absolutely doable. We've done this so many times. Uh, it's getting kind of old. And then we get that done and we multiply by x minus 5. Or we forget about that one, multiply these together first, and then we'll multiply that one afterward. Or we can multiply these two together first if you want to, and multiply that one third. If any combination seems to make more sense, seems easier to you, do that one first. Um, I kind of recommend starting with this one and then bringing this one in because when we multiply these together, we're going to wind up with this trinomial, these three terms. And it's a little easier to multiply these two terms into this trinomial than this trinomial if we multiply these together first into this binomial. So just a recommendation. x squared minus 11x plus 30. I think we've done that enough times. We can do that. If we want to be real careful, we can use these little arches. x cubed minus 11x squared plus 30x plus 4x squared minus 44x plus 120. There's only a, one x cubed term, so that's like an x squared term and an x squared term. So minus 7x squared, 30x minus 44x, 11x, and only one constant. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions?